Hey guys, Richard Older here and welcome to the channel. In our previous episodes, we've taken a look at the 400 horsepower big block combos and the 500 horsepower big block combos. So you know what that means. It's time to take a look at 600 horsepower big block combinations. Now there are a lot of different ways you can make 600 horsepower with a big block Chevy. And we're going to take a look at three different versions. We've got a turbo version, an NA version, and a blower version. Because as they say, variety is the spice of life. After taking a look at our 400 and 500 horsepower big block combinations, now it's time to step up to the 600 horsepower versions. And now we're starting to make some pretty good power. These are the kind of power numbers that you'd more associate with a big block, even though lots and lots of stock ones out running around are making a whole bunch less power than that. But this one, we're, we're going to jump right in with basically a turbo application because we know how easy it is to add power with a turbo. And this is a perfect example of what happened because basically this was essentially a stock 8.1 liter, the Gen 7 big block Chevy, the 496. And all we did was add a single turbo to it. Obviously we had the right injectors and we have a good management system and stuff. But this is what happened when we added a little bit of boost to an 8.1 liter big block. So we had our stock 8.1 supplied by uh, Amos. Thank you again for that. And we ran this motor up on the dyno Basically put it up there with our big long tube headers, which are two and two and a quarter inch. We ran it with a Gen 6 manual throttle body. <laughs> Excuse me. We ran it with, um, when we ran it NA, we ran it with the 80 pound injectors because we knew that we were going to be stepping up our game to run, you know, even more power with the boost. So we wanted to have enough injector flow, especially because we were going to be running the boost with E85. So we ran it basically in stock trim, but with a manual throttle body and long tube headers, no accessories, and run in this manner our stock big block Gen, uh, Gen 7 motor, produced a peak of 423 horsepower and 554 foot-pounds of torque. So it's doing pretty well. You could see it, it was still making near 500 foot-pounds of torque down at uh, 2,000 or even 1,900 RPM. It was doing exactly what it was designed to do with the long runners and extra displacement and all that. So it was doing, you know, it's a really good truck motor, but if you want to make even more boost, <laughs> we'll show you, or even more torque, Here's what we did when we added, here's what happened when we added our single turbo. This was run at about seven pounds of boost. And we can take a look at the description on our turbo setup. Very simple. We ran the stock exhaust manifolds feeding a, a custom Y pipe that I made. The Y pipe ended in a three inch V band and we added a three inch V band to T6 um, adapter basically to mount a turbo. We can run, run any size turbo that we want on there. We put in a Summit S475 T6 turbo. We had our Pro Charger air to water intercooler run dyno water through the intercooler. We ran it with a two bar map sensor and a Holly HP management system the same way that we ran the NA combination. And we had our, um, uh, no controller on it. Basically, we just had two uh, turbo smart waste gates with seven pound springs on them. So this all worked out pretty well. We ran right at seven, seven pounds, 7.1 pounds. And with our turbo running E85 through our 80 pound injectors, the peak power jumped up to 638 horsepower. So well into the 600 range. And peak torque was impressive, all, all the way up at 848 foot pounds of torque and over 800 down at, you know, 2,500 RPM. That's the impressive thing about these motors is they're so torquey because they're designed for um, big heavy truck and uh, RV applications. But a little bit of boost on these things goes a long way. So not, now not only were we making over 600 horsepower, but nearly 850 foot pounds of torque. So let's get to our second combination. Our 600 horsepower big block combination number two was a 496 naturally aspirated combination actually using factory 088 iron uh, GM heads. So I'm also going to show you what happens when you pick uh, or when you install a really good set of heads on this kind of combination. But let's get into our build up here. If this was a 496, so it was a 431 by 425 stroke, so 431 bore and a 425 stroke. We had probe small dome pistons in it, you know, around 20 cc's, uh, 20 cc small dome. That allowed us, and they also had valve release that allowed us to put enough camshaft in this to help make, help the thing make power. We had comp uh, 300 tall um, hydraulic or, or solid roller lifters. The camshaft that we put in it was a 300 BR, uh, 
14 camshaft. So it was a 652 lift, both intake and exhaust. 255, 262 degree duration and 114 degree load separation angle. We had 1.7 aluminum roller rockers on it. We ran a single plane Edelbrock 454R, basically a Victor Jr. intake manifold, a Holley 950 carburetor. We had our two and a quarter inch um, uh, long tube dyno headers on it and no mufflers. We had a Mylodon windage tray and oiling system. It had a windage tray and a, and a big pan. Um, so that helped with the... A lot of times stroker combinations, especially big blocks, you can get into winded, winded issues. So the oiling system is kind of important on those. We had an MSD distributor that was locked. It ran best with a um, an indicated 40 degrees of timing. We ran 86 and 87 jets if you're interested in that stuff. And we made sure when we were running this on the dyno that we adjusted the oil level so that we could get the right combination of power and, and the oil pressure curve that we were looking at. So run in this manner, our 496 naturally aspirated motor produced 631 horsepower and 578 foot-pounds of torque. And as I said, we had factory 088 cylinder heads on this thing. Yeah, stock iron heads. But... And, and they worked fairly well, and obviously we made over 600 horsepower, which was what this combination, uh, what this video is all about. But here's what happened, because we were using this particular combination for a cylinder head test. And here's what happened when we put a you know better set of aftermarket heads on it to replace the factory heads. We'll take a look here and see. So we, we installed a set of Edelbrock heads, and the Edelbrocks were... Uh, CNC 355 head so they flowed pretty well and they worked pretty well and as you can see they worked a lot better than the factory head did <laughs> so that that pushed our power output up over 700 in fact 723 peak torque was also way up in fact the power was better basically everywhere than the factory um, 088 head peak torque checked in at 626 foot pounds I know that the 700 horsepower combination is not a 600 horsepower combination, but I just wanted to illustrate what happens um, because we did make 600 horsepower and a lot of guys would be happy with a 600 horsepower NA 496 with a stock head on it and that works fairly well. But it just goes to show you how much better uh, the combination will be with all of the other things remaining the same, but just putting a good cylinder head. So let's get to our last 600 horsepower combo. Our final combination was a Gen 6 454 to which we installed a Speedmaster type top, uh, like a low dollar top end kit and then a 671 supercharger. So we'll jump right in. This was a Junkyard Gen 6 motor and we had upgraded it with heads, cam and intake that included a set of ASCAS 320 Speedmaster oval port heads and we had roller rockers on it. We also installed a Speedmaster dual plane intake run in naturally aspirated trim. And it says a Holley 650 XP carburetor. And we also ran a, a decent sized camshaft. It was a high lift relative to its duration for a big block. It was a Comp XR271 HR12. It offered a 591 610 lift split, a 224 230 degree duration split, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. For the guys that are keeping score here, it ran best at about 39 degrees of total timing. We also upgraded the valve spring package on the Speedmaster heads, run with our long tube headers and an MSD distributor. It also needs to be pointed out that when we upgraded the heads from the factory, uh, we could have used those as well, from the factory Gen 6 heads, they had a much smaller combustion chamber. These had 119 or 120 cc combustion chamber, and that lowered the compression dramatically. But you know... <laughs> <laughs> lower compression for boost we could have run it either way actually but run with this combination na the low compression big block produced 469 horsepower and 508 foot pounds of torque but here's what happened after we added our supercharger and we added a number of different pulley combinations which is the great thing about boosted applications is you can just raise the boost so our first pulley combination had a 60 tooth blower pulley and a 50 uh, 50 tooth crank pulley. So we weren't spinning the blower very fast. In fact, it only made a peak of about four pounds of boost. And that pushed power up to 
547 horsepower. But here's what happened when we went up. Well, we basically just stepped up pulley ratio and kept stepping up the boost. So as we stepped up the boost, we made more and more power. So we're continuing to jump up here by changing our pulley ratios. And then we finally ended up with our last run with a peak of 9.1 pounds. And that was with a 50 tooth blower pulley. So we made the blower smaller and the blower pulley smaller and the crank pulley bigger. We stepped up to a 55 tooth um, crank pulley and a 50 tooth blower pulley that produced a peak of nine pounds. And then we were well over our 600 horsepower mark. It made 654 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 625 foot pounds of torque. Now it should be noted, we, we ran two 950 carburetors on this. We ran 30 degrees of timing on the, um, on the blower. It should be noted also that this combination was run on pump gas. And also that this supercharger with this particular blower, we've made getting uh, up near a thousand horsepower, 930 or 940 horsepower. So the blower has a lot more potential on this low compression application. Um, it was kind of just getting started here at nine pounds. There's a lot left in the blower combination, but for driving around on pump gas, low compression, you know, a big <laughs> blown big block, obviously pretty cool. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, it should be fairly obvious from this video. It's pretty easy to exceed 600 horsepower with a big block Chevy. Now, we did it three different ways. Obviously, with the turbo 8.1 liter, very easy. Just add boost and away you go. But let's talk about that combination for a second. If you wanted to make even more power with your turbo 8.1, the two easy ways to go about that. One, you just turn the boost up. If you're running 7 pounds, you run 10 pounds, you're going to make more power and a lot more torque. The way that I would go about it is I probably would install a cam and springs in the 8.1 liter, get it to make even more NA power. Then you could do even more power at the same boost and then even more power at more boost. So looking at the supercharged combination, basically it's the same thing. That particular 671 blower will support a lot more power, especially because we had two 950s on it. So it had everything going for it. I would run E85 on it, and we've done that in the past, but I would also upgrade the combination below the supercharger. Maybe different cylinder heads, maybe more compression, maybe more displacement, all of that is good stuff, and the blower will certainly support a lot more power. Let's talk a little bit about the NA stroker combination. Obviously, it's fairly easy, as we showed, to make pretty good power even with the stock cylinder head. But when we put a real cylinder head on there, it made even more power. But I want to talk about the displacement. If you're going to build a dedicated buildup on a big block, chances are you're considering changing the, the crankshaft. So if you're going to upgrade the crankshaft, I would always go with the added displacement. I know you're thinking about, oh, well, I want I need to upgrade to a steel crank. Yes and no. If it's an application where it's going to go in a boat and you're going to be running wide open throttle for minutes at a time, I might opt for the steel crank. If it's a combination that's going in a car and you're driving it around, even if you're racing it occasionally, I have never broken a cast crank and I would not hesitate to put a cast crank build up as a 496 in any kind of street car, even a street strip car. And that's my point. If you're going to upgrade the crankshaft, you're going to replace the factory crankshaft that came from your junkyard combination, always opt for more displacement. Get the stroker crank. Don't just get a replacement for your 454 displacement crank. Step up to the stroker because you're going to get a lot more power and a lot more torque. Our merch holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing and 700 coming up next.